Chapter 10 Love T. Love your enemies first Bible lesson. Matthew chapter 5 verses 23 and 24. Therefore if thou bring thy gift to the altar and there rememberest that thy brother hath ought against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way, first be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. Second Bible lesson. Luke chapter 17 verses 3 and 4. Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him, and if he repent, forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. Golden text, Matthew chapter 18 verse 35, So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your heart forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. Forgiveness, the way to salvation, this sermon serves as a refresher course. God does not want us to perish, and that is why he sets aside certain periods for certain gospels so that we may learn from them. It is written in the scriptures that after those days, the Lord shall set out another day for his elect, and when you hear his voice harden not your hearts. Refer to Psalms chapter 95 verses 7 and 8. God does not like the death of an evil man, neither does he want any of his children to perish. As it were in those days, today, God has set aside certain days to teach man to know himself and know all things in due course. God does not want anything from us. He needs neither our money nor our wealth. Rather he wants us to be free from the impending judgment that is to before this adulterous generation. This is the time of judgment, but it is disheartening to note that the world is quite unconscious of it. It has been said that judgment will start from the church. Now it has started. We are now in the court. You have been forewarned about the things that will befall the world. Of a truth, whoever refuses to practice the injunctions of God shall be condemned. If you begrudge another person, you have begrudged God, even yourself. And so you only make empty noise when you come here and you begin to shout, let thanks and praises and dominion be given to God. To which God are you referring when you have already begrudged him? Such praises, you know, cannot be accepted by God. You may sing as loud as you can, but if I may ask, have you settled with your adversaries? Do not only strive to serve God but blend your service with peace, love, and holiness, without which no man shall see God. Make peace with your adversaries as soon as possible, and you shall be saved. As you profess to love God with all your heart and soul, try also to make peace with your adversaries with all your heart and soul. God does not want the call which he extended to you to be in vain. God only wants us to repent and make peace with our adversaries. The scripture says, For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 31 and 32 Is there anyone who is not guilty by this sermon? If you cannot dwell peacefully with every fellow, why then do you come to the Father? It is not an easy task to work for God when you cannot reconcile with your adversaries. You always struggle to sing, dance, read the Bible, but you cannot strive to reconcile with your adversaries. Right from 1984, I sent out a circular to the entire world that everybody should reconcile with his or her adversaries because the time of judgment is nigh. If the Lord should come now, do you know that you would perish because you have begrudged, hated, quarreled with and refused to forgive others? Of what use are these things to you? Brethren, I want you as a matter of urgency to make peace with your adversaries because the judgment of angels will not spare you. In fact, if you do not reconcile with your adversaries, do not come to 34 Umbo Pentecostal Hall any longer. Why do you profess to be friendly with someone yet you cannot forgive him when he provokes you? A man of God has to be plain and open-minded. If you are hurt, be free to approach the fellow, and if he is sensible, he will plead for forgiveness, and once he does this, you should be hasty to forgive him. And as you forgive, you should also forget. If you lack the grace to do this, ask the Father who gives liberally to all his children. Realize, as quoted from the golden text that if you do not forgive your adversaries, your heavenly Father will not forgive your iniquities either. Very many of you hated and refused to forgive your enemies when you were in the world. But now, you are called into the kingdom, and you have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. 
what then stops you from making peace with those who offended you? Right from this year, I want you to start to make peace with all your adversaries. Just call the person concerned and tell him, Oh, brother, I had been annoyed with you for some time now, but I want us to forget all our past grievances, and it will so stand henceforth. Do not begrudge anyone. It is sung in the chorus that, if you want to be saved, forgive one another. This is nothing but the truth. Though you may distribute all your wealth to the poor and be of service to God all your life, if you do not reconcile with your adversary, you cannot be saved. What particular thing has one done against you which you have not done against God? This is why you must first forgive and reconcile with one another even if the offending one has gone on spiritual transfer. Better still if one has not departed this earth plane, call him and reconcile with him, else you will not be saved. You are the source of your problems. Do you know that if you fail to reconcile with your adversary, you have closed the door to goodness against yourself? I have given you the word. It is now up to you to act upon the word. Read the first lesson again. First Bible lesson, Matthew chapter 5 verses 23 and 24 Therefore if thou bring thy gift to the altar and there rememberest that thy brother hath ought against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way, first be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. Reconcile with your adversaries, brethren, what does it cost you to reconcile with your adversaries? No matter the gravity of the sin which you had committed against a fellow or he has committed against you, all that you need to do is go and reconcile with the one. No one sins against his fellow man, but against God only, and so if you refuse to reconcile with an adversary, you have offended God and not the person, poesy. And as such you have perished. Irrespective of what one does against you, do not wait for the one to come to you, you go to him for reconciliation. When you are invited for reconciliation, do not be puffed up or refuse to listen to the pleas of the person seeking the reconciliation. You should oblige and listen to his pleas for reconciliation. The scripture says, Be ye angry, and sin not, let not the sun go down on upon your wrath. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 26 It is also written, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Matthew chapter 5 verse 9 So brethren, Go and reconcile with your adversaries quickly. All the things which you do not regard as being important are regarded and noted as important by God. The things you esteem are not esteemed by God, because our ways are not God's ways, neither are our thoughts God's thoughts. Do not work without any reward. Do not labor unnecessarily. Work with hope that you are laying treasures in heaven. Reconcile with your adversary so that you may have a reward for your good works in this kingdom. Do that which shall avail you the opportunity to be in the kingdom of God. And avoid everything which will cause you to be denied by the Lord on the day of reckoning. The scripture says that every man is like the ocean that is filled with that. As such, whenever you are offended, or when you do the offending, do not hesitate to reconcile with the fellow so that your sins may also be forgiven by the Father. If you do not forgive another man, then the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ will be put to naught. Follow the examples of our Lord Jesus Christ. Refrain from attributing your problems to witches, ghosts, or man, for your problems are caused by the unforgiving spirit in you. Know that once you refuse to reconcile with your adversaries, you are in perpetual fire and this is solely the source of your problems. When you rejoice with and you accept those who greet and love you, of what use is this to you? You go on to kill every fly that passes by you, and yet you feel unperturbed. Do you know that you will be judged by God? You see the brightness of a star in your village, perhaps a poor youth, and as a result, you take advantage of him, and do all you can against him. Let this serve as a reminder to you. God is the one to judge. If God loves the death of a sinner, he would not have revealed these things to us. Therefore, he urges us to be acquainted with these vital things and act immediately, lest we perish. Whatever sin you may have committed against your family is not greater than the one the prodigal son committed against his father. Just like the prodigal son, be conscious of your sins and return home to your father, for he has been waiting for you. This is not the time for long preaching but the time when everything is to be kept there for all to understand and act upon. If you are unemployed, sick, unlucky, and disturbed, 
Just put the words of this gospel into practice and you will surely see a remarkable change in your life. I once gave you the story of a certain bishop who had a church. While he was alive, this bishop had problems with some of his church members. Then when he died, he was taken in a coffin to the graveyard. While prayer were being offered for his interment, he knocked on the coffin and someone summoned enough courage to open the coffin only to discover that the bishop had woken up. The bishop requested them to take him to church and they did. At the church, he told the congregation about his ordeal in the world beyond. He said, as he was in the world beyond, he noticed two gates. One gate was for Christians and the other for pagans. With the consciousness that he was a bishop, he rushed for the Christian's gate. To his surprise, he was stopped by the gatekeeper who refused him entry. When he asked why he was refused entry, he was told to either go to the pagan's gate or return to the earth plane. As he opted to return to the earth plane, he was told to get reconciled with all his adversaries on his return. He did just that and in fact, as long as he was strong enough to walk, he spent all his time moving from house to house, reconciling with all his adversaries. Read the second lesson. Second Bible lesson, Luke chapter 17 verses 3 and 4 Take heed to yourselves, if thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him, and if he repent, forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. Forgiveness gives freedom from sin, some of you profess to be Christians, but you cannot forgive your offenders, and you cannot reconcile with your adversaries. How are you Christians then? As a Christian, on realizing that you have caused disgrace to another, why not be humble enough to plead for forgiveness before he drags you to court, and you are made to pay to the last penny? All that exists in this kingdom is for everyone to be at peace with his neighbor, else that person will not see the kingdom of God. Anything short of this is not permitted here. It is said that a bird can only sing melodiously when it has not yet fallen into a snare, but once it falls victim, it cannot sing again. Similarly, now that you are still enjoying the Father's grace, show your appreciation by hearkening unto the instructions given by the Father. I am assuring you that on the day of judgment, everything will certainly change. It is an unchangeable fact that everything you have been doing will be read out from your individual files, and judgment will be meted out accordingly. God, as you know, is no respecter of persons. He is the only one who cannot be bribed. He is aware of all the sins in the world, and as the only rightful judge, he cannot be bribed. In order to evade God's judgment, you have to forgive anyone who offends you. No matter the number of times a brother offends you, if he feels remorseful for his sins, forgive him. Your salvation does not come from any other thing than to reconcile with your adversaries. Though your sins may be read as scarlet or red as crimson, they will be forgiven you on condition that you will forgive your adversaries. Sodom and Gomorrah would not have been destroyed had they pleaded for forgiveness from God. You may recall that God openly told them to come and reconcile with him, else they would be destroyed. But they bluntly refused. And in pursuance of divine instructions, the angels of destruction trampled on the cities. The only thing that can save you now is to follow peace with all your adversaries, else you will perish. Emulate our Lord Jesus Christ, who while on the cross, pleaded with his father to forgive all his offenders. I recognize that the Jews knew not what they were doing and forgave them. If you cannot practice any other sermon, endeavor to practice this one, for it will lead you to the kingdom of God. All those who practice this very sermon will certainly have great testimonies. In brotherhood of the cross and star no one should sue another to court. Such an act is forbidden. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 1 to 7, it is said, Dear any of you, having a matter against another, go to law before the unjust, and not before the saints. Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? If then ye have judgment of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. I speak to your shame. Is it so, that there is not a wise man among you? No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren. But brother goeth to law with brother, and that before the unbelievers. 
Now therefore there is utterly a fault among you, because you go to law one with another. Why do you not rather take wrong? Why do you not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? No one should report another to the police. All that you need to do is to reconcile with your adversaries immediately, and when you offend someone, after reconciling with the fellow, kneel down and penitently ask your heavenly Father for forgiveness, and you will be forgiven. Recall what Paul said, For that which I do not, but what I would not, I consent unto the Lord that is good. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Romans chapter 7 verses 15 to 17, there is an adage that says, he who dances does not know that his back is not straight. Similarly, when one hates one, one does not know that he has sinned, but now, I am telling you that, when you hate or nurture evil in your mind, you have sinned. As such, you are asked to reconcile with your adversaries. If you refuse to practice this sermon, you will not really know the blessing it carries. But once you practice this sermon, you will derive peace, prosperity, good health, and success will cause you to testify of God's goodness. It is not just the sins that you commit that are deterring your spiritual progress, because when you are asked to go and plead with the person for forgiveness, you refuse. Your sins cannot be forgiven if you refuse to forgive others who sin against you. Very many people commit sin, even deadly sins, but they bluntly refuse to plead for forgiveness. But now the Father has given you the spirit of peace and love, so that you may be able to forgive and live peaceably with one another. Have you realized that if one offends you and pleads for forgiveness, but you refuse to forgive him, you have perished? That is why Christ said we should always forgive our adversaries, irrespective of the number of times they may have offended us. Read the Golden Text Golden Text Matthew chapter 18 verse 35 is so likewise, shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your heart forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. Discourage the unforgiving spirit, brethren, bravery does not end with one throwing another on the ground during a fight, for the one you throw down may in turn be able to bite you severely. Do not rejoice with any sense of pride when you offend someone, else you will be condemned. Again never let an offense come from you. God has therefore given us a long time to repent so that we may not be condemned with the world. If there is anyone among us who has not forgiven and reconciled with his adversary, let him do so immediately, so that he may have peace through justification. Our Lord Jesus Christ said that except a man be born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. John chapter 3 verse 3, John chapter 3 verse 5, You are striving for the kingdom of God but before you are allowed to enter, go first and reconcile with your adversaries. If you refuse to reconcile with your enemy, expect to have a portion in the lake of fire. Stop fasting, praying, and celebrating feast to have your problem solved. Instead, go as a matter of priority and reconcile with your adversaries. Everybody is talking about the end of time, but realize that the end of time has come, so make here while the sun shines. The Lord does not want us to perish, hence with patience, he advises us to make haste and reconcile with all our adversaries. It may interest you to note that at all times, when you visit me, the first set of questions I pose to you are, are you annoyed, do you harbor any ill feelings against anybody? Now I want you to reconcile with everyone who has offended you and be free from all problems. I do not intend to prolong this preaching, let he who has ears, hear. May God bless his holy words. Amen. Thank you, Father.